Hey guys, this is Ed, Paul, and Anna of Current Brand Media, and we are here to tell you a little bit more about our sponsor. Sportsball is a great subscription service geared towards minor league baseball fans. Each box features a different minor league team. You get a box every three months with minor league baseball gear, including different styles of hats like Ed's favorite, the dad hat. The cost is less than $12 a month. Proceeds from each box goes to More Than Baseball, the only nonprofit dedicated to the well-being of minor league baseball players. We all know that Parents' Days are coming up this summer, so if you've got a mom or a dad or a grandma or a grandpa who are particularly difficult to buy for, but you know they're baseball fans, this is the answer, guys. Meet your new favorite team at sportsballbox.com. Is there anybody there? <laughs> What's up, Dadhead Crew? And on this episode, I got to sit down and have a good, fun conversation with my friend Johnny Bolin. We talked baseball, we talked parenthood, we even talked about the funny things that happened to us as fans of the game, okay? For example, a little story he told me about when he went batting practice on Father's Day at one of the minor league baseball fields that he went to, all right? So without further ado, guys, I give you the episode. All right. Well, I want to welcome you guys to yet another episode of the Dad Hat Chronicles. This is your host, Ed. And with me today, I have the Mr. Ambassador for the state of Mississippi for the Otterbots, Johnny Bowen. How you doing, my friend? Doing good, man. This is this is a treat to be here tonight. Awesome. I love it. You know, it's like, you know, you are... I've had so many ambassadors already for the, for the, the Otterbots is just too much. I can't even, I, I don't even know how this is happening, but this is how this gets going. <laughs> you know, it, you really think about it, like what Mike talked about and Josh, it's really genius. Mm-hmm. It's marketing genius. And, and like they said, you know, it comes up on Twitter as Danville baseball, and but the fact that they put this together and you you literally have people around the world right wearing stuff. I mean it's genius, absolutely marketing genius. And I'm I'm hook line sinker, you know. I'm yeah, I'm that you no, know, it got me, you know. <laughs> and enjoy it, really enjoy it. It's funny you say that because uh, it's something that I've noticed, and then some of the things that you know that I since I've been doing this, you it's all about the, the, the team embracing their fans, right? That's, that's the main thing. Uh, and I think that, you know, the, the Appalachian league has done a really good job with that. Right. You know, I'm not, I'm not taking away anything from other leagues, you know, but like the sock puppets, you know, (laughs) my favorite team, sorry to say that. But, you know, but the sock puppets, the Otterbots, right? They've done such a good job in embracing what, you know, what baseball is all about and is their fans, right? Right. It's it's the old cheers principle, I call, where everybody knows your name. Yeah. You know, from the song of the show Cheers. And, you know, the, like you have said in other podcasts, these major league teams, and I love them, I love my team, but they don't know who I am. You know, you really think about it. There's that. I mean, there's literally thousands and millions of people connected to those teams. But you know that connection, that community that they've created, like Burlington, like the other teams in the Appalachian League, and, and Danville has just taken this, and it's just like I said, it's just genius to me. It just it's fun. Like I said, that sense of community and belonging that you don't get in a lot of places. Right. Really? Yeah, you really don't. And, and, and you know, you, you're right. Major League Baseball, I think right now, I think they're having a problem with identity. Right. Um, and they they're not embracing the fans like minor league baseball is embracing it. Well, you know, you're, you're exactly right. And I've been fortunate over the years to, to have met people like it worked for the baby cakes or years before the Zephyrs, uh, the Biloxi Shuckers, and some of the nicest people you'll ever meet working minor league baseball. Hardworking. And hardworking. And one of the things that attracts me to minor league baseball 
and, and this hit me a few years ago. Initially, of course, it was the cool names, the logos, the hats, the, you know, the shirt, you know, all. but you really think about it. Minor league baseball is chasing dreams and it's, and it's beyond, and it's even more than the players because those guys, 90% of them will never make the major league, but they keep grinding and they keep working and they keep chasing that dream. And you can say that about the office staffs, the social media people, the announcers, they're all chasing a dream. I mean, it, it inspires me because they, you know, like I said, 90% will not make it, but those guys go out there every night, the long bus trips, the, the travel, the not much money, but they keep chasing that dream. And man, it's just like I said, it inspires me when you go to those games, when you kind of think about what's really going on and you meet, like I said, so many wonderful people that they're just chasing that dream. You know, they, they are, they're trying to get to that next rung of the ladder, you know. You know, you say you say that and I'm, you know, for a lot of people that are not watching it, like, I mean, you and me are seeing each other through the magic that is Zoom. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I was I pointed right at you as soon as you said that, because it, you, you're you're right. You know, like. 90 percent, you know, will never make it to the majors. I also think that on, on the other side of that is I don't think a lot of them want to make it to the majors. Right. <laughs> But, you know, you, it's, you know, it's the office staff, right? You know, all of those people that are putting hard work that wear many, many, many hats every day. See what I did there, the hats? Yeah, that hats. <laughs> um, so, right, it, it's just, you know, it, you got to do it for the love because the, the initial pay, you know, and this has been discussed many times, is not that much. Right, right. Yes, the love of the game. We we talk about it. It's you know, and it just it, you're right. You have to love it. Mm -hmm. I say that um, whatever field somebody's in, you got to love it. If you don't love it, you'll be miserable. Whatever you're doing in life, you got to you got to have a heart for what you do. And like you said, so many people that you meet have contact with that may be a Twitter conversation but they're their hearts in it you know they or they or they'd be doing something else with their life correct i absolutely agree with you um so i i think you and me both are on the same wavelength here my friend all right so let let let's jump into my one question that i ask everybody <laughs> how did you become a fan when was that moment that you became a fan of the sport whatever that sport is right obviously a lot of people we talk about baseball on this podcast but you know there's football there's there's hockey you know basketball what was that moment that you decided i'm a fan well you know i thought about that question for tonight it's kind of it, you know it's kind of interesting because we're my dad I, it's always neat when you hear the people you interview talk about their fathers and childhood and and growing up, my dad is not a big sports guy. Um, he loves he loves Alabama football. I won't try to do Keith Jackson. I almost slipped in Keith Jackson voice there, and that was kind of it, you know. And we um, we would go every so often to a Barons game. You know, I'm originally from Birmingham. Go to beautiful old Rickwood Field, and and I, I remember my first time at Rickwood. He sent me to the concession stand. And it was the classic, hey, you want something to eat? Yeah, Dad. Well, hey, you want to go get it? You know, kind of deal. <laughs> and, I tripped, and I fell on top of the Baron's mascot with nachos all over the mascot. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I remember Wikiwood was the mascot's name. And so my dad's not a big baseball guy. And then I was that little leaguer, Ed. And gosh, you know, I thought hopefully things would change. But in the 70s, picking – players for Little League was not exactly encouraging. <laughs> I mean, it would be me and like tumbleweeds on the field. Like, <laughs> I was a terrible baseball player. I mean, just terrible baseball player. Um, now, years later, uh, in the early 90s, I played softball all the time and loved slow pitch men's softball. That was a huge thing. 
And I would say I was kind of mediocre with softball, but I always loved baseball, even though, like I said, I didn't grow up in an environment where my dad was a big baseball guy. I was a terrible little leaguer. Uh, I mean, the community I grew up in, Little League was huge because a strong Little League obviously builds up till you get to the high school level. And my hometown won three state championships after I graduated. Oh, wow. Baseball was such a huge part of that community. And so, you know, just I just have always loved baseball, you know, I, it, from childhood. Um, just, you know, just really started probably my first minor league talking about hats mm-hmm. probably first minor league hat probably that was not Birmingham Barons when I was in college I remember I had a real it, it, real the dark navy blue Toledo mud hens hat oh wow with, with the T and uh, was it muddy the mud hen on the front the, the bat you know yeah the yeah 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 um Back then, we have there's kind of a regional sporting goods chain here called Hibbets, and back then Hibbets would sell occasionally some minor league stuff. So I bought that at a local pre-internet sporting goods store, and like I said, played played little league poorly, played a lot of softball, company league, church league softball uh, back years ago, and, and just just love it. Then then you move forward. Uh, help coach softball. My, my daughter was younger. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I coached two years of fast pitch girl softball, seven to nine year old softball, and she played T ball. Uh, you'll love that era, by the way, when your daughter gets old enough to play T ball. I, I cannot wait for that. I mean, T ball. And then the second year she played, our league used minor league teams. So they oh, that's had, smart. That's pretty cool. Um, they were the Charleston River Dogs. And so um, you had the Biscuits and Lug Nuts and all these great minor league teams. First year she played, it was Major League Baseball team. And ironically, we were the Marlins. <laughs> great peel, you know, and they had the hats. And the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, ball was so much fun. Some of my best memories – uh, of, of her growing up was just two of us out in the yard throwing a ball, uh, bought one of those tees with a little rubber. So the ball would come back, you hit it, pick it up, you know? Yeah. Uh, I remember. Yeah. But yeah, you, you'll love the, If your daughter wants to play tee ball, you'll love the tee ball. It, it, it's just, it's just so much fun, you know? And just, I mean, it was just so much enjoyment, something I love already. And she's 20 years old now. I'm, I'm going to sound like every old man you'll meet. It goes by quick. Yeah. <laughs> now I have a 20-year-old daughter. But she'll say to this day one of her favorite places to be is at a ball game. You, you did know? your job, my friend. <laughs> you so, did your you know, job. Uh, she, she loves being at the ballpark, you know. And um, she told me a couple weeks ago, well, I'd like to go see the Stuckers play before the season ends. And I said, yeah, of course, we're about five hours from Biloxi now where we were two and a half. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm in kind of an interesting spot where we live for minor league baseball. I guess the closest team is Memphis, which if you've never been to the ballpark in Memphis, it's amazing. The Redbirds, right? Oh, man, it is. It is a sweet ballpark downtown. Oh gorgeous ballpark and uh we got to go july 3rd this summer i only got to go to two ball games this summer went to jackson tennessee to see the winnipeg gold eyes oh nice yeah i I finally got to see some american association play chicago battle of two great uniforms by the way like wow and i was in the team store hoping there would be that gold eyes hat or something right and, and somebody asked before I could get it out of my mouth to the lady working there, well, do you have any Winnipeg stuff? No, it's coming in. And I never made it back over there. It's about an hour and a half from here to Jackson, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. You know, for you to watch an actual baseball game live. Exactly right. Yeah, it's it's kind of, you know, you're just kind of away from all of it. 
But, yeah, Jackson, I, I'd never been to a ball game in Jackson. I'd been to that ballpark. We went in January, my wife. Uh, we went up there just for me to go souvenir shopping. <laughs> Love it. Birth, birthday, and uh, we went up there, and there's a restaurant there in Jackson that I love, and went and had a meal, had our lunch, and, you know, she said, pick out what you want for your birthday. I'm like, oh, okay, I like this, you know. And hey, I'm all for that. Yes, absolutely. They literally opened store for us because, you know, it's off season, and then they don't have a team. Mm-hmm. You know, that's right and there's no but they still and in fact when we were there for the uh winnipeg gold eyes they were selling a ton of jacks in general stuff that's right they still do diamond jacks uh, i left with a, a diamond jacks hat the night we went back in may and uh so they had a, a, a really nice business selling things but there's no host team there right now so yeah, they the haven't closest, said anything, have they, about putting a team there? Well, that's a, a mess, it looks like. Well, everything I've read online, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know. It's a shame because it's really a nice park. Uh, I've never been to a game till May, and, and, and it's really a shame. I, I hate that for the people that were the season ticket holders, the people that were really involved with the Jackson Generals, front office people. Right, exactly you know, that lost jobs, they've lost their team and, you know, but, uh, it was, it's a pretty park. It really, it really is. Yeah. It's, it really is a shame. A lot of the, the towns that lost baseball, some of them went to survive into indie ball or the collegiate, you know, route, but some of them just, they folded and they weren't, right. you never, you never saw them again, which right. is sad. It really is sad. You're exactly right. So, um, so, so tell me, um, how is it that you became my friend, the Mississippi ambassador for the Otterbots? Tell me that story. Like I said, you know, they, they, they posted that on Twitter and I thought, wow, that's kind of different. And so, uh, kind of like what, like I said, uh, Josh had shared and Mike had shared just kind of said, yeah, Hey, I'll do it. And, you know, Twitter, this interview, uh, Twitter over the years with me and minor league baseball has been very good to me. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm I'm almost Forrest Gumpian. (laughs) And so, you know, I put this in the line, this this interview, um, the uh, few months ago being interviewed for the paper, newspaper. I remember that. I read that article. um, Which was just mind-boggling that my tweets it was so funny the reporter and i were talking said his his boss said hey you got to read these guys tweet i'm like what and so i guess they picked the biggest lunatic to interview ed (laughs) (laughs) it worked out my friend that's all that matters and and i i I was i'm so shocked and 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 he was so gracious and we we talked over an hour that afternoon and uh, the, the picture that's with the article, my wife babysits this little girl. And uh, I, I walked over to the house and, and she, I said, I need a picture. And she literally handed me the baby. <laughs> I really? her my phone. And that's, and then, of course, we call her the junior ambassador uh, for the Danville Otterbots. But uh, it, you know, it's just, like I said, it's just a lot of fun. You know, it's, um, you know, they just really interact with the fans very well. The other ambassadors, you know, you interact with them. And uh, that Zoom call that we had months ago, and, uh, it, it just is really, it, you know, like I said, it, it's in a, not a long list, but really interesting things that minor league baseball and Twitter have come together. Oh, yeah. And that of them to be interviewed by the Star Tribune and, you know, your face is on the local paper. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you grabbed at least one of those articles and you framed it because that is awesome. I know I would. If I'm interviewed for a newspaper, I definitely will be framing that sucker up. Well, I don't know if you saw the post. Uh, I made a, uh, I call it the official ambassador tribute shelf in yeah. my office here. And, um, uh, Elias Weiss was the reporter. He mailed me that really cool magazine. 
the, the, the paper prints and had the schedule and a big feature about the auto box and a copy of the, you know, the newspaper. And so I wanted to preserve the, the magazine. So that's why it's framed. And I came up with the idea for the shelf, the fuel damsel things there uh, on the shelf. And I do need to get that framed. Now, I do have a copy from online <laughs> right here on my desk, you know. So yes, sir. It's never far away. Uh, but yeah, that was just a really cool moment this year. They, they have brought the whole ambassadors following the Autobots. It's just brought a lot of, of, of happiness and joy, you know, just like I said, it's fun. It just really is fun. And goes back to what we've been talking, right? The main theme of minor league baseball is all about their fans and they figured it out. They really have. They, they, they really, really have. Twitter, uh, Twitter started with me in 2016 with my, uh, these weird occurrences, 2016. Um, I've been on Twitter now six years, um, mm -hmm. but they popped up the other day, you know, it's your six year anniversary. I'm like, really? And then, uh, Ed, I did the math and I, I averaged 4.7 tweets every day. What's wrong, <laughs> What's wrong with me? But in 2016, I guess I was going through a midlife crisis. Now, Ed, I hit midlife at 30, okay? I'm not making it to 95, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, midlife was 30, okay, at this rate. So 2005 years ago, I've been wanting to get a tattoo, okay? And at that time, there was a, a tattoo artist at the church we were at. And has a business over in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And my wife was kind of, oh, you talk a good game. Go ahead and get one. Go ahead and get the tattoo, you know. And, you know, we adopted the Shucker, Biloxi Shuckers as our Mississippi team. Like I said, I'm originally from Birmingham, wife from Birmingham. Uh, our daughter was actually born in New Orleans 20 years ago. You know, we're just gypsies with this mm -hmm. life. You know? And so we set it up. And so took a picture of the tattoo, put it on Twitter. Well, then I'm getting a message from the TV station in Biloxi, Mississippi. That, like I said, that time, two and a half hours away. Wanted to know if they could interview me about the tattoo. <laughs> on Twitter, Ed. That's crazy. <laughs> and uh, then it's direct messaging. And, and, and so we went over there. And it was one of those nights, like, are we going to play or not? Cloudy, rained a little bit. It was toward the end of the season. And so they set this up outside the ballpark. And in one of the conversations, direct message, the uh, reporter asked, well, who's your favorite player? And we got to meet Brett Phillips, you're now the Tampa Bay Rays. Mm -hmm. uh, in April of 2016, we went to Pearl for the Shuckers and Mississippi Braves, and he just came up and introduced himself. We were sitting there in Shuckers gear. Really? And, like, up, and he just came and introduced himself. All right. And then my, my, my daughter scrambled to the team store, and he, uh, he and Nathan Orff and Javier Betancourt signed a Mississippi Braves baseball. Well, <laughs> so then they had yeah so, that's awesome like really nice dude so now now we're in august okay and the lady the lady said well you know who's your favorite shuckers oh brett phillips so when they're doing the interview they surprise me and they have brett phillips come out of the ballpark while they're interviewing me for local television in biloxi mississippi in 2016 all from one twitter post about a Biloxi Shuckers tattoo that's on my left arm. That is awesome. So, you know, I'm a Brett Phillips fan. You know, I I thought that was so incredible last year in the World Series, him having that moment. Uh, really, really nice guy. Super, super nice guy. Will be great on television one day. His personality, sense fits. of humor, that weird laugh. His bobblehead sits here on my desk, you know, uh, a, a big fan, you know, of, of Brett. Well, then 2018, because of Twitter, there was a contest who had the best baby mascot in minor league baseball. 
between the New Orleans baby cakes. Now, see, we used to live about an hour, 45 minutes from New right. Orleans. Right. And I went to school in New Orleans. Like I said, our daughter was born in New Orleans. Uh, we lived there 2000, 2001. And just fell in love with New Orleans, you know, to this day. So we would go to baby cakes games, you know, a couple baby cakes games a year. And, you know, I love the Zephyrs, but I thought this, you know, I love the rebrand. You know, I thought they nailed that rebrand. <laughs> it, it was definitely different for sure. It fit, it was a very New Orleans thing. Right. My daughter said it's kind of weird, but it's kind of New Orleans. You know, right. like, well, you know, I kind of, yeah, I, you know, in minor, you factor in minor league baseball and all that. So they had this Twitter contest between New Orleans and Scranton Wilkes Bear because they have, you know, the baby, what, Bambino, I think they call it. Mm -hmm. Somebody probably won't correct me on that, but the baby wearing a Yankees hat and the, needs a shave and the pinstripe diaper, who had the best baby logo in minor league baseball with a trip for two to Miami. Okay. And you had to use a certain hashtag team baby cakes, I think it was. So I would do that this, you know, that summer, just have fun. Okay. Yeah. Baby, why not? Baby cake. I, no concept of winning. So I'm, I was, I used to do part-time hospice chaplain work. So I'm working. I get on Twitter, direct message from the guy that was the merchandise manager for the baby cake. And he gives me his phone number and says, hey, can you give me a call? Well, I've never talked to this guy on the phone. I talked to him at the stadium. Great guy. They, they had the, the nicest staff with the baby cats. Uh, okay. Really, folks with New Orleans were as friendly as, of people you could ever meet. He said, well, Johnny, we, we've drawn uh, names for the contest, and you've won the contest in Miami. No, what? What? I mean, I nearly, I nearly drove off the road, Ed. What? what i live in rural mississippi okay in rural i still well i'm in a different part of mississippi you know the three biggest cities in mississippi are um mobile new orleans and memphis okay so you know <laughs> yeah, so, go. so i'm like what'd you say and he said yeah yeah you, just, you know let, let me know and 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 the only thing that we had out of pocket was like food and like Uber or taxi. You know, my first time, you know, they don't have Uber in rural Mississippi. Okay. I mean, you know, so I came home, we were having car problems with this piece of junk car that I used to have. My wife's ranting about the car. I said, hold on. I just got, a, I just talked to Bob with the baby cakes and we want a trip to Miami. What? And it just stopped all the car worry for that. And it was a one night trip to Miami and they played the Yankees no way I mean you're talking about and I'm a baseball nerd proud of I'm not a computer nerd I'd have more money if I was a computer nerd I'm just a baseball nerd yeah history nerd okay we walk in there and of course Miami's just gorgeous put us up in this beautiful hotel I mean it was just first class all the way we were on the seventh row at Marlins Park. That's awesome. I mean, they put put us in these great seats. I'm walking in there, and the Yankees are taking batting practice. I'm thinking, that's the doggone New York Yankees. I mean, I'm watching, bombers, huh? I'm watching the Yankees first, and I had not been to a major league game. In fact, we went to Cleveland in 2000 for the Indians and Rangers opening weekend, tax weekend, April 14th, 15th. <laughs> That's awesome. Last time I had been to a major league game was 18 years prior, and it was just awesome. And then they placed us with a father and son who had won the contest in Scranton. No way. So I'm sitting there, and I'm baby caked out. I've got two baby cakes jerseys. I got the Nola jersey on, the hat. And, uh, of course, they're in Yankee stuff. And my wife's kind of wearing just neutral, whatever, clothes. <laughs> uh, regular stuff, you know. And so I strike up a conversation with the guy sitting beside me. And I said, well, you know, I, I want a contest to get here. He goes, we did too. And so we have kept up with him on Facebook since 2018. We call August 22nd 
our fan anniversary. <laughs> Your fan anniversary. <laughs> our fan anniversary. And um, my brother in law was a big Braves guy. You can imagine living here. Yeah, well, Braves, and in this part of the state, you're so close to Memphis, i.e., St. Louis. This is Cardinals kind of territory here where got it. State is Atlanta Braves, but you do see more Cardinal than Atlanta Braves. And and so um man, you know, and that's all from Twitter. And then like I said, this, this tonight is because of yeah. Twitter. You know, it's just amazing. Uh like it's like Forrest Gumpy and you know, you know what though? Uh, listen, you are not you are not just an ambassador for the Otter Boss man. You're an ambassador for baseball, my friend, because those are some great stories. And it's all about what is it? Just interacting with people on social media, being having a positive attitude and just spreading good, you know, good positive vibes out there because the world is filled up with enough negativity. I'm not about that. I'm about to spread in some some positive vibes. And hopefully this podcast does that, right? Because I got some cool people that I've met and, you know, including you that have told me so many cool stories already. Yeah, it, it's, I, I'm, I'm exactly the same way. I've heard you say that, you know, on previous podcasts. And, and I, I'm the same way. There, there's enough negativity. I, I don't talk about politics in public. I, I don't, I don't, you, you'll never read anything where I get into political things. I, I just, I, man, a lot too short, you know, it really is. And, and you know, it, it's, it's an imperfect world. I mean, that's just the way it is. You're you know? right. And, uh, and ranting and raving and about po politics. I see more of that on Facebook and maybe because, you know, because Twitter you don't know a lot of those folks personally, but Facebook, you worked with them, went to school with them. It's a little bit different dynamic. I didn't get on Facebook the last summer when we moved because, you know, we're in the midst of the pandemic and you, you were not meeting people face to face just to get to learn them. And then I to learn my wife and I and didn't get in, in that. But, you know, some of the stuff you read and the, yeah. you know, just much anger and, and all this stuff. And it's like, you know, you need things that are positive and fun and light and take your mind off things. Completely for a agree. Bit. And that's the nature of sports. It should be. Yeah. You know, that, you know, you spend that three, three and a half hours or whatever, you know, basketball, of course, not as long. You know, you, you get away for a while. You, know, you forget about everything that's happening in the world or in your life. It's as soon as you go into that ballpark, you go in through the gates, you forget about everything and enjoy it. The entertainment, the food, the people watching, because let's be honest, there's a lot of good, fun people watching at a ballpark. And that's right. all this is. Right. Yeah. I mean, and that, that should be, that's the way it should be, you know, just enjoy. And then like we've talked about with family, you're making those memories and, you know, you, you'll think about, Hey, we were at this game. I bought this hat and that that's a memory connected. It's not just buying a hat, but well, we sure had a good time at such and such stadium. Mm -hmm. Think about those, those, those great memories, those fun memories um, that you have going to a ball game. Like I, I read all the time. And you just get away, get away from the world for a little while. You know, I, I have my head stuck in a book, you know, on a pretty regular basis and, and mo mostly baseball, as you could probably get, you know, <laughs> I, you know, I love biographies. I'm a biographies guy. I'm reading the Hank Aaron book right now. I had a hammer yeah. that he, in the early nineties. Excellent book. Excellent. Excellent book. Um, you gotta pick it up. Really, really good book. I found it at a used bookstore in Tupelo a couple months ago, and it's just a fantastic book. Really, really good biography. Now, have you read the um, the uh, uh, Clemente biography? Oh, that's excellent. I, I have that book. Read that years ago. Fantastic oh. book. Oh, but that because that's somebody I miss seeing play. You know, he died, what, 71? I was born in 72. Mm -hmm. So I grew up seeing him play. And that's a fascinating book. Really, really good book. Uh, the big fella about – I'm a Babe Ruth guy. If you 
mm-hmm. see Babe Ruth stuff here in the office. Uh, the Big Fella is an excellent biography. Um, it's just really a lot of good baseball books. Ba- baseball gets a lot of good scholarship in terms of writing. And oh, just, yeah. Great books. You, you, uh, there, there's many, many really good books out there recently you know in the last because of the pandemic last year and all that that's when i really also got into reading a lot more baseball books um just because you have so much free time right Right. so you you want i I, me personally wanted to educate myself some more right there's so many uh stories that you can definitely you know catch up on the uh, negro leagues uh baseball there's so many good, cool stories, Satchel Page, you know, so it's, if people are not reading it, they're really missing out on so much history. Oh, yeah, you're exactly right. Um, yeah, there, and, and it's really, it just, like I said, you just get into those stories and, and you learn and you appreciate what those folks endured and went through. And I totally agree. A lot, a lot of good books, a lot of good scholarship. If you're ever in the great state of Alabama, uh, adjacent to the beautiful ballpark in downtown Birmingham where the Barons play, there is a Negro League museum, and it, it, it's it's well, well done. The coolest mm. thing they have in there, you mentioned Satchel Page, they have a pitch simulator. So you pick which pitch you want him to throw, and so here's this video image of Satchel Page throwing the ball to Really? really cool yeah they and they've got a picture of him and bob feller and there's a lot of cool artifacts that's awesome uh, that museum we went the first you haven't been back uh years but we were able to go the first year they were open and uh, it's it's a really neat museum not a very big place you know for this first year i'm sure it's expanded uh but yeah it's 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 a really cool place have you been to the one in kansas city have not i oh. love Oh gosh, I'd love to go. I see the stuff Paul has put online and, and being there, you know, and I, another ambassador there. <laughs> right, exactly. I keep just, I, they keep coming. They keep just, <laughs> well, you know, to, to use, I guess, the Marvel terminology, we're like Hydra. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> use the Marvel term, the you know, MCU term. You cut off one head, three more ambassadors appear. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing that's great we're, analogy we're, we're like hydra you know you you could probably spend weeks and months interviewing ambassadors like i said it's literally international that's the, great you no know, uh it, it's i think every state uh when that first got started i think every state has somebody and then buy some ambassador in fact mississippi the guy moved i think to maryland can't remember his name off the top of my head, but we had a vice ambassador. And um, I made the mistake of saying something positive, one tweet about the sock puppets, which I learned my lesson every day. <laughs> and, and we almost had a full coup d'etat here. We had a JFK kind of moment here. Really. <laughs> the highest level of ambassadors. Uh, he was ready to take me out and assume the ambassador title for the great state of Mississippi. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny, you know, because, you know, the t- general manager for both the teams, are, they're, they really are friends, you know, and, and the banter that goes between them and between, you know, fans, it's amazing. It's hilarious. I absolutely enjoy it. Yeah. You know, he shared something in that Zoom call that the rivalry between the cities goes back a long time. So when it was Burlington Indians and Burlington Royals versus Danville Braves, and I mean, so there's a mutual disdain between Danville folks and Burlington folks. (laughs) And I'm honest with you, Ed, I love that count. I love rivalries. You know. That's what makes sports. Yes. I mean, I, I, I grew up in the hotbed of college football rivalry, Alabama and Auburn. I mean, it doesn't get, I mean, it's every day it's Alabama and Auburn. They it's play like, one football, but it's every It's day. like for us here in Ohio, Ohio State and the state up north, you know, the Wolverines. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it's a lot of fun, um, you know. Now, 
I went to UAB. My wife's more the Alabama fan. Like I so said, my dad is an Alabama fan. I, I like Alabama, but I'm not a obnoxious jerk because I went to school somewhere else. Yeah, you're a blazer. Right. I'm a UAB blazer, and I that's my school. You know, I don't, you know, it, of course, after the uh, destru- destruction at the hands of Georgia, I got to church Sunday morning. This real sweet lady said, oh, that was so bad what happened to your team. <laughs> And I said, well, to quote Kermit the Frog, it's not easy being green. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I really foolishly thought they'd give Georgia a game for a little while. That day. Listen, I'm from a sure. small, you know, I went to a small school myself. I, I'm Kent State. So, you know, I root for Ohio State, right? So I'm a golden flash, you know, and all that. But, you know, at the end of the day, I root for my team. That's That's where I got my degree from and all of that. So... I'm, I'm, the, I'm the same way. And we'll see. And they started football when I was a student there. You know, they started in 91. I was there from 90 to 94. So I was there from, you know, the very beginning of it starting and been to, I can't even tell you how many UAB games over the years we went to. I've been to Baton Rouge to see them play. Uh, when they actually beat LSU, which was still one of the great shocking moments. Uh, and then we went to Tennessee in 1998. Ed, we bought tickets on our honeymoon to the Tennessee UAB game because we were, you know, everybody in Alabama goes to Gatlinburg for their honeymoon. That was like, (laughs) you know, the old joke was growing up, if you want to go to heaven or hell, you have to go through Atlanta. You know, (laughs) an airport growing up in Alabama. And the old joke was everybody that gets married in Alabama goes up to Gatlinburg. (laughs) We went back to Gatlinburg on our honeymoon. And, and, and she agreed to let's pull on Tennessee's cast. Go not, hey, let's just show up. And we found the ticket office. We're wandering around their basketball arena. I look up and there's Pat Summit's office door. You know, we're walking around the arena there at, at UT and found the ticket office and and bought tickets that day. And then went months later for the ball game. You know, and um, but yeah, I, like I, said, I grew up a big Alabama fan. Uh, but then when I started school, it was like, I need to, I need to wear the green, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a blazer. I, that's right. There you go. There you go. Oh, absolutely. Oh, and they put the prints and stuff away, you know, uh, that's the way it goes, yeah. my friend. At the end right. of the day, we root who we root for, you know, that's it. That's exactly right. You, you're exactly right. Ab- absolutely. Absolutely. So, so let me ask you, um, where we are nearing the end of the baseball season, right? Uh, are you planning on doing any kind of, of game f- for the rest of the year? Are you doing anything? I wish. I, yeah. I, I want to be like General MacArthur and make the – he promised he'd come back to the Philippines. I want to get to Danville. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be in Danville. I, it's That'll be sometime I, next year. There you go. It, it's the, – the problem you have – uh, is it's not it not being a, a regular minor league field season. It's a shorter window. You got a smaller right. window of time to get there. And so I, I want to get there. It's, you know, we've mapped it out. My wife, well, let's go. You know, she's supportive of it. That's about 10 hours. And we've tried to plan out, you know, and I said, we've got to get there. I, I want I want to to hug Scotter the Otter. I want I want to be there with my brothers and sisters of the of the beautiful teal blue and the futuristic orange of the Otterbots. Uh, I've never thrown out a first pitch. They promised any ambassador would show up, and, and Tim from Montana uh, got to go. And I mean, they they it was just like he got the town was open for him. These great That's photos. Awesome. Everything they just rolled out the red carpet, and uh, I said I would. Now I would have to warm up. I, wouldn't that be awful to throw out a first pitch and just, you know, what I'm saying. I, yeah, I mean, you're right. Exactly. I had a very humbling baseball experience last Father's Day. The Braves, Mississippi Braves, had this promotion for Father's Day. You can go take batting practice. Ed, I'm an old man. I'm an old fat bald headed man. <laughs> The last time I swung a bat, it was girls' softball practice for seven to nine year old softball. <laughs> and our bright orange t shirts, you know, that we had for softball. And, 
And, and so I don't know why I thought that would be a good idea for us to do this on Father's Day. And it was a great idea for the Braves because obviously no minor league baseball, but it was something you could do, be at the park, and you got a special T-shirt, and and they you got a hot you know meal, and and they and you got your own intro music when you came up to the plate. Uh, I went with the classic MC Hammer, too legit to quit. <laughs> That's great. It, it, it beat out Johnny B. Good. You know, Johnny B. Good would have been the low hanging fruit, but I had my daughter listen to a couple ideas and we came up with uh, Too Legit to Quit by MC Hammer. They put your, you know, your faces on the screen. Your child was the PA announcer. That's so my, awesome. And I got up in the, and I asked, Chris Harris, who used to be the announcer for the uh, Biloxi Shuckers, and been with the Braves the last couple of years. I asked Chris, I said, how fast is that ball coming? He said, 70. I said, 70? I said, I don't drive 70. <laughs> and the ball's coming set. They put this Braves helmet, and I'm wearing my old, speaking of T-ball, my T-ball dad shirt. Daughter's name apostrophe s dad the old teal marlin <laughs> this great hat helmet hot day 145 degrees out there is what it felt like and i couldn't touch it <laughs> no i knew i was in trouble the guy ahead of me we're watching him hit now he's 20 years younger than me probably 80 pounds lighter than me muscular good you know athletic looking guy look like he probably just played college baseball so <laughs> and i'm sitting there going oh man this is a bad bad, bad. <laughs> this is not gonna end good yeah i'm gonna come you know it's the classic walk in like a lion leave like a lamb <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean amber bumping at the stadium over the pa and i'm in the teal and, and i got that and i'm ready you know and, and then that i mean flying at it got so bad, one of the brave staff just started soft tossing the ball to them. True story. Oh, my uh, God. Like, at least get the thrill. And I made contact with a couple of them. But I had not won a baseball bat and tried to hit a moving baseball. And like I said, I was a terrible little league. So th this is not Reggie Jackson coming up there trying to hit a baseball. Okay? Right. More like Janet Jackson trying to hit a baseball. <laughs> And I'm just, oh, but it was fun. Great, great family moment, fun. Great experience. experience. Great experience. You'll never, I mean, to be on a professional double-A field, wearing the helmet, swinging a, an authentic double-A baseball bat and being there and having your name on, you know, it was a great coup that they couldn't do probably during a regular season. But in the pandemic, no one's getting to come ballpark that was a really smart promotion yeah. that we with and um make some money have make some memories at the same time right uh embarrass old people like myself just let them know you know you can't play so we're gonna show you you know and now to this day when i'm watching a game somebody strikes out i'm going well i get it <laughs> <laughs> don't need to i'm not gonna be one of those fans that tell you i could nope i can't how can he not hit that? Well, let me tell you how. It's coming. This was 70, not 100. Coming 90 plus at your head. Yeah. They're uh -huh. pitching 100 miles an hour now. You honestly think I'm going to swing? No, I'm just going to drop the bat and walk away. I felt like John Crook in that all-star game when Randy Johnson was pitching. He turned his helmet on back. Yeah, I was like, forget it. Like, I'm out. But that's the way I feel. He only had 15. He did 15 minutes per person that's pretty cool i look good for the first 30 seconds of the intro song and then after that it was, it it was, was all, just all over that behavior hey, that first 30 seconds man was those great those 30 seconds oh, great swinging the shillelagh as bob Uecker said in major league two you know swinging the shillelagh <laughs> <laughs> and, that, that's and, awesome and looking good like I said, lion and lamb. You come in like a lion. So oh, my God. <laughs> I'm crying right now. <laughs> that's, that's great. That's awesome. Oh, man. All right. So 
we're going to go ahead and uh, where before I go into my famous, not so famous questions right here, my friend. Okay. All right. right. Any plans besides going to Danville for next year? Do you have anything going on as far as baseball is concerned? I really want to see Madison. I want to see the trash pandas. Um, I do have a little trash panda swag. They have a really, they were so popular that before they built the stadium, really, really nice shopping center, kind of an outdoor shopping center in Madison. Uh, they have the trash panda emporium it's called. And so I have like two hats and like two t-shirts. So I've already got the gear. You know, I've got this, you know, great dad, two great dad hats. I call one of them rocket fire red with the, you know. Oh, I got that one. I have that one. And, and so I would love to see a game there. And then there's also in Madison, Virgil, who is the Alabama, the Gary again, the ambassadors. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, is a season ticket holder. So I'd get to meet, I'd love to meet him. I'd love to meet one of the other ambassadors in person. So I want to get to Madison. I'd love to go to Birmingham, see my crazy brother-in-law. My brother-in-law has over 400 bobbleheads. Oh, what? Now I have, I don't, in this office where we're, we're visiting, I have 38. Now that's kind of crazy for a small space, but I have 38 bobbleheads. I have some still in boxes. We, I have not bought shelving since last summer when we moved. So I've still got bobbleheads and, and logo baseballs and books. All my baseball books pretty much are in boxes still. But he he is a Barons fan. Mm, through and, and through, huh? And he's he lives, you know, suburbs of Birmingham, works in Birmingham, you know. So I would love to get to get I've got other friends there. I love to hang out with some of my you know, old friends and go to a Barons game. That's like I said. That's a beautiful ballpark. Oh, that they they did that ballpark. I mean, perfection. It is that in Memphis are my favorite two parks. Nice. It is just unbelievable that both of those facilities. So I'd like next year's season. I'd like to go to Madison. I'm gonna go back to Memphis. We had a great time in Memphis. I got to support the the uh, minor league uh, Jacks uh, Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp supporting the Marlins. I was afraid my, my wife said, you got to wear your, your hat and shirt. I see you trying to get me beat up in the parking lot on the way in the stadium. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's going to have on red. And, and I, you know, and so I had on the jumbo shrimp t-shirt, the back of it reads haters are going to hate with the shrimp on the back. Really cool shirt I've had when they first rebranded. But anyway, love to get back to Memphis. Uh, I'm going to be curious to see what they do in Jackson. You know, if, if they get an independent league team. Yeah. Hopefully so, they get something. Acts and uh, somebody, you know, be there. But yeah, that, that's kind of my, my goal for 2022. Nice. I'd love to see Nashville. I, uh, like I said, it's three hours away. I would love to see that ballpark as well. But I, by golly, I want to get to the beautiful state of Virginia. I want to just bask in the, in the, in the glow that is the Danville Otterbots. Who's <laughs> <laughs> all a handsome bald man like you and I are and, uh, and and just be there in Danville. Danville looks like about the size uh we live 30 minutes from Tupelo. Okay. And Tupelo and Danville look like population wise about the same size cities. And then I saw today on Twitter that they're getting this monster casino. Caesars is coming to Danville, Virginia. Really? Uh, and building this huge casino uh there and I, I tweeted out that the ambassadors ought to wear matching jackets and look like the rat pack <laughs> the that, that would the be so pack. awesome we all had matching you know this color blue sport coats on and, 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 and hang out hang out at caesar's you know oh yeah uh, i don't think you might like that tweet but it's out there <laughs> but listen it's already out there you put it out there many, many of my tweets bomb man they just you know, you know what it all, you know, you've been luckier than most, my friend though, because right. some, of you, you, some of your tweets have gotten you interviews, have gotten you trips. So there you go. That's exactly right. But yeah, there are some, not, uh, not everything is a, a dime and sometimes we're cold. There you go. You know? That's how it happens. Let me ask you because you are a collector as well, correct? Yes. Yes. 
you got books. Uh, I'm sure, obviously, you got plenty of hats, correct? Yes. I, now, I don't have the level of someone like Eric. And then, you know, Mike, I listened to last week, 150 hats mm-hmm. a year. That's amazing. I'm in all of that. I, you know, I, I may average maybe a hat a month. Gotcha. Uh, you. I have that, that cool Fort, Fort Worth Cats hat. Oh, yeah. And I, I got a new Autobots hat T-shirt. They had a flat sale Labor Day and got the mesh back. Yeah, 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 yeah. The trucker hat. The trucker hat, which I've had to warm up the trucker hats over the years. Um, my first job was Taco Bell, and we had to wear those trucker hats, and it didn't, like, move on your head. You know, it like, just stuck, yeah. Stuck there. It looked like I should be on my CB heading to the uh, choking puke, you know. <laughs> uh, and, and they just, I, I, you know, for years I would not wear a mesh hat, but now that they've kind of changed it where they're sort of dad hat esque, softer mesh. Oh yeah. Uh I like them. And and that and that hat fits really well. Uh I, I like the colors. Uh my my wife doesn't like she bought me the fitted hat, which is my favorite. I love all three. And uh with the eyes on it, the Otterbox face. Oh, I'm, I wished, you know what, guys at the Otterbots team, make that into a dad hat, and I will so buy that. And we were talking yesterday, and I, I had on the new trucker hat. And, and I said, what's your favorite? She said, I like the blue one. And I said, what's my favorite? Oh, you like that one with the eyes on it? I said, yeah. He goes, yeah, it's kind of a younger dude hat. <laughs> I said, why'd you? Then, then, this here's, here's what's the beauty, Ed. You may have learned this in marriage. When your spouse buys it, then you, you got an automatic defense there. Because I can reverse it and say, well, you bought the hat. You're the one who bought it. You're the one who bought it. She goes, well, you wanted it, so it gets flipped back on me. Yeah. <laughs> no matter what, you're going to lose. So you're just like, you're right, honey. You're right. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did want it. And uh, I love the hat. Got it for Father's Day. You know, uh, I'm real easy to buy for birthday, any occasion. It's minor league baseball stuff. It's not easy. Or Marlon something. It's real, real easy to buy for me. You know, I just. I love Nova, you know, when the re- reveals come out in November, the yeah. new love thing. Oh, man. I, I just gobble that up. And it gives her ideas for Christmas. Oh, I can't. I love that time of period when there's new stuff, new merchandise for next year, new branding. Oh, it's the best. It's like Christmas for all of us fans of the minors. Oh, so it's so I, I'm really looking forward to see what Beloit does. You know, oh, that's they, right. That's right. Because they're rebranding. You know, they've had those options out on for a while. Uh, and then I saw, I think Midland is going to have a new version of the rock hound. Uh, I've never, I've never disliked that logo at all. And I've never had any of those, you know, never had a hat uh, for Midland. I think it's a fun logo. It's very yeah. kid for, you know, I've seen little league teams, you know, like we talked about earlier, my daughter played T-ball that year. They used I've seen that was a popular one that the kids were wearing for T-ball and literally it was Midland with the rock hound. Yeah. But I saw today on Twitter, they're, they're rebranding. I don't know if it's a new name or just a new logo. The you new Winnipeg hope. good. The new Winnipeg logos look good. Really sharp. Uh, the problem with Winnipeg to me was the shipping. Oh, trust me. I paid a lot for my stuff, but you know what? It was worth it because uh, pandemic year, right? That, and this is what we, what we did, right? We supported pandemic year. It, yeah. A lot I mean, of my it, Canadian friends are paying a lot of money to have the sh- hats from the U.S. go to Canada, though, too. I bet. I bet. Yeah. It, I've looked and looked and looked at because I, I enjoyed watching them play. The PA announcer was – he kind of did sort of a Vince McMahon kind of thing with his – Right. You know, kind of used his voice, sound like, you know, and really, really did a great job as the PA man that night. And I was fired, like, I want a gold eyes hat. And then I would look at the shipping cost, and the shipping was more than the actual hat. Yeah, they had sale clearance on the website. That's a really cool looking hat, but you know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 I'm all about the sales. I'm all about the sales. Me, me too. I, I'm a junk store goodwill baseball hunting bobblehead i love going to antique junk stores 
and finding baseball stuff. You know what, my friend? That is the secret right there. If anybody wants to start any kind of collection, any vintage, anything, go to antique stores Absolutely. and secondhand stores because they will have so much stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. I, there's so much stuff that's in this this room that I could say, oh, I got that at Goodwill. I got that at this store. Got the, you know, and it. I've got this really cool Marlins locker that I found at Goodwill. Really? And I keep bobbleheads. I use it for storage for bobblehead boxes inside. But then I have uh, three Marlins bobbleheads and two of the starting lineup figures, kind of a Marlins. I have my stuff displayed by team. Gotcha. Like I've got Zephyr New Orleans baby cakes section on the shelf. I have a little Jackson Generals by team. And so I've got a whole Marlins. And then my desk is Brewers and Shuckers. You know, with Milwaukee, you know, because I, I kind of follow them because of the, of the shucker. So, right. But yeah, that the thrill of the hunt. I do very little eBay, some, most of the stuff on the ambassador shelf over here was eBay, but just a couple items, you know. I, I like the reprint cards. I know people would, you know, kind of who that. I, I, the reprints are from 83, so the reprints are not. You know, I, it's just really just kind of display and celebrate the history of Danville baseball. You as know? long as you like it, my friend, that's all that matters. I would love to have the real one from 1909. Don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, I, I, I love that. Um, don't do that as much as I, I'd like to, but I, I love And then, you know, sometimes you go to the stores and you don't spend a penny. You don't find anything and off you go. Off you go. You know, the way, the way it goes, but, uh, that's awesome. Love it. All right. So are we ready? I've been, you know, I've been doing my homework now. I, <laughs> I think hey, you're going to throw me a curveball question. I've not heard before. Oh, it's going to happen. I, I, I've been, I've listened to the last four podcasts to do my homework. <laughs> you see, here's the no, thing. You dropped the friends question in Seinfeld. I was ready for that. One. And, I was see, like, well, and, that and that's the thing though, right? Because a lot of people were like, oh yeah, I'm ready for this. I'm ready. I've been preparing. I'm like, okay, I got to step my game up now. Right? I got to go think of more, you know, more questions. So me and my wife, we sat down and we looked at, you know, more questions to ask. So here we go. I, I had that perfect answer. I was going to vote C, King of Queens. <laughs> there you go. It, 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 and I said this to my wife the other day. I said, I'm getting ready for this. I said, I'm getting ready. I said, I've been hearing the questions. And I said, you know, I'm really a lot more Doug Heffernan than I'll ever be Chandler Ross or Joey. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, my, my friends were like Deacon and Spence and, you know, the crew. That he, <laughs> this you know, is great. I don't know why that show doesn't get more love. I mean, I know it's syndicated and it's, it's all, you know, you find it all the time. But that was a classic sitcom. It was funny. I mean, and, and, and by the way, he wore Brooklyn Cyclone. You had minor league baseball. He yeah, wore he... Brooklyn Cyclone shirts, you know, on the show. So and he even had that factor. But, yeah, I'm a lot more Doug Heffernan than I'm there. <laughs> Love it. Right. All right. So you go to the ballpark. Okay. What's your snack of choice when you go to the ballpark? And, and I've heard you mention this, but it's my go-to barbecue nachos. That sounds delicious. Pork nachos. Uh, Memphis has great ones. Uh, Biloxi, there's a barbecue place in Biloxi that has that concession, and they're outstanding. Barbecue now, is it on a helmet? No. I wish it was in a helmet. Yeah. Oh. A, a runner-up, the Mississippi Braves have fried green tomatoes, a great southern delicacy. Fried they, green tomatoes, huh? old concession stand that's nothing but like fried stuff i think it's sponsored by some hospital probably for heart <laughs> everything at that concession stand is fried because that's where we live and i'm not <laughs> it ed <laughs> but i fried green tomatoes and pearl at trustmark park and they're really good that'd be my that'd be option b after the uh, love it i uh, love it all right um what was your nickname growing up? Um, oh wow, that's a good wow. There's the curveball. See, yes, like, hey, right off the bat, we're going. You, well, I'm bringing you back to that Father's Day, uh, baseball extravagant that you had. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Uh, now, technically, 
Johnny is a nickname because my legal name is John. My dad is John, so I always went by Johnny. So Johnny kind of sort of a nickname. Um, the last nickname that I was given was Big Saucy. <laughs> I had a teacher. There's a chain of hamburger places in Alabama called Milo's. Milo's sells the bottled tea jug. I don't know if it's in Ohio yet, but uh, Milo's tea. Well, they have Milo's hamburger places. And my wife one year for Father's Day bought me this Milo's burger t-shirt. And it says, stay saucy, Birmingham. <laughs> Just say San Diego. It's a you know play on that. And so I was wearing that shirt. And my friend Frank uh, started calling me Big Saucy. When I call Frank to this day, he okay, Big Saucy. <laughs> uh, I had a teacher in high school call me Otis from the Andy Griffith show because I burped in class. <laughs> he called great. me Otis, graduated high school. <laughs> um, my wife calls me Babe. We've, we've called each other that for years, you know. Uh, but yeah, technically, Johnny is a nickname. Um, uh, but I've had several. Love it. I absolutely love it. Um, all right. Rain or snow? And, you know, here, snow shuts everything down. So I got to go rain. <laughs> I, I love looking at snow. And, you know, here and, and growing up in Alabama, I mean, you had a decent snow. The world stopped. Schools were closed. Oh, yeah. you, might, you guys are not prepared for that. You're not not prepared. It, it's beautiful to look at. And, and it's, you know, it was it was like a Hallmark movie here this winter. You know, taking pictures and all yeah. that. But, um, and I don't like rain either. I'm not a big, you know, we're supposed to get seven, eight days of rain here, but I'm not, I'd go rain of the two. I go rain. Got it. Um, okay. Strangest thing that you've ever eaten. Oh, wow. Well, you bring in the heat. You're like that fishing machine in Pearl. <laughs> Great, 70 miles an hour. And I get to <laughs> strangest thing I've ever eaten. Gosh. Probably a duck omelet a mm -hmm. duck omelet. when i was in high school me and two buddies were trekking out a place for the prom a french restaurant so you got these three huckleberries <laughs> going into this fancy french restaurant called cafe de france in in birmingham at the botanical gardens so we go in there and i didn't know what to order and i thought well i've never tried duck and so I ate a duck omelet at Cafe de France, botanical <laughs> oh gardens. So, and they they ended up riding together for the prom, and then that's another that, that's another podcast. My prom. <laughs> that, that's part I, two of this epi of this uh, podcast. The, the, the sad tales of Johnny's senior and junior proms coming out available on Apple Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. I love it uh last movie that you watched oh wow okay are we talking theater or just at home last movie wherever you it's the last one whether theater or at home wow bro. from start to finish oh wow because i'm bad about watching bits and pieces yeah it's, it's, if it's on tv you got to finish it in, in in certain movies if they're on the remote gets sit down tombstone Tommy Boy, you know, there's certain movies I love, especially because I'm stuck in the 1990s. <laughs> if you a good movie, um, probably the last one I watched entire, speaking of the 90s, was The Rock with Sean Cordery. Yeah. I think I, I, wa I, I watched that the other, the other day. Now that we've got college football back and baseball, you know, I don't, but I'm like I said, I'm bad about it if I'm flipping channels. Oh, I'm with you. And and it, it may be a movie I've seen so many times. My daughter had an interesting question for me the other night about that. Uh, if I had to sit through Grease, Sweet Home Alabama, or Pretty Woman, which one would I sit through? I don't know why she came up with this question. Good question. And I was like, I thought. You need to write for Ed. But anyway, what my first thought was, his question for the podcast, wow, that's, I don't like Grease. By the way, nobody looks like they're in high school in that movie. You ever notice that? Absolutely. They look like grown adults. Yeah, I'm with yeah. you. Um, and then Pretty Woman, 
of course, as I told her, I didn't see that movie when it was out because, by the way, I was a teenage boy with no girlfriend. Okay. But I had no reason to go see Pretty Woman. <laughs> uh, and then my wife and daughter love Sweet Home Alabama. Okay. The accents, it's just so, you know, I, I, I voted Sweet Home Alabama. I mean, just by default. My wife will watch that all day, every day. Oh, I just, I, I just, <laughs> it's not, not that any of them are bad. Don't get me wrong. I, I don't want you to hate mail. I can't believe that guy hates Greece. No, I, I you know, maybe, you know, uh, there's I, nothing wrong with that. Like, it, 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 listen, if you don't like it, you don't like it. If you never, you know what I mean? There's, there's so many movies out there that I don't like. It's just how, how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. I you know the best part of Greece is the intro song, the theme song. Yeah. The song's bumping. Love the song. Greece is the word. Like the song. But I, the movie, you know, I just, I saw Pepsi's using some kind of ad with a Grease thing. Yeah. Retro drinks or something. And I thought, oh gosh, will this thing never die? <laughs> no, it won't. It really and won't. It, it won't. Grease is the word. <laughs> All right. Favorite board game? Oh, got to go Mon Monopoly. Yeah. yeah Monopoly. It's a good one. It's a good one. All right. If you were, well, what would be your spirit animal? Man, you are bringing heat. Are you Bob Feller or Ian Carter? <laughs> <laughs> Mudcat Grant? I mean, bring <laughs> all those Cologne there in the Indians Uni. I mean, you know, Charles Nagy in the prime. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. I'm never, this is something I've never even thought about. There you go. See, uh, I'll, I'll give you the, I'll give you the otter box because there you go. That's the, an otter. Uh, there we go. It's on my hat. Yeah, Boom. an otter. <laughs> love it got our mascot <laughs> um pepsi or coke 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 see coke. i can't i can't I've, I've tried it don't get me wrong if i go to mcdonald's i i'll drink the coke because i don't know what it is i have to you know their coke from mcdonald's is delicious <laughs> i don't know right. what it is <laughs> right <laughs> but you know, if it's out of a can or a bottle, I'll go Pepsi all day, every day. Uh, yeah. Pancakes or waffles? Ooh, pancakes. I like both. You tell I like both, but I, <laughs> I, 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 I'll go pancakes. Both, pancakes. both, both are delicious. Both are wonderful. You're right about that, my friend. Uh, early bird or night owl? Early bird. I'm really surprised. I, I'm, I, uh, I'm still awake. <laughs> This has been awesome, but I'm an old man, as I've said. So I got to get out of here. You know, I, I've been known to fall asleep with, you know, probably pretty woman playing on the TV. Oh, so many times. I've done it. Like, I'm sitting on the couch, me and my wife watching a movie. Also, I'm out. Well, you know, she, my wife loved it, and I'll look at her and go, this is your field of dreams, isn't it? Because I love field of dreams, okay? Great and, movie. And pretty woman, I think, is her field of dreams. Like, if it's on or anything related to it, forget about it. He's watching pretty well. Same with Greece. Same sweet on Alabama. I love it. I love it. All right. So two more questions and then I'll let you go. How's that? Okay. Is a hot dog a sandwich? No. Good a hot answer. Dog. Hot yeah, dog is it. a hot dog. A hot dog. And last but not least. Oh boy, here we go. I bracing. know. Here we go. You're getting ready for this. I'm bracing. <laughs> Who was your crush growing up? <laughs> oh wow okay this is gonna show my age <laughs> and, and this when my wife listens to this podcast i hope she does uh the great tiffany amber Thiessen, saved by the bell that was it, my buddies when we worked at the grocery store as teenagers would go would go get those teenage magazines just to look at her pictures <laughs> uh, the magazine I mean, she she was in, in my my little group of friends. She was like how you judged every girl. Are they as pretty as Tiffany Amber Thee? This is great. That was my well. That's a tough question. Uh, maybe this will be edited out of the uh, final. <laughs> uh, yeah, I will go. I will go. Tiffany Thee. Uh, Good answer. Good answer. That yeah. That from my era. And because and I'm, I'm like the age, they're all that were on that show. Maybe yep. like 
year older, maybe. Um, you know, I, I just had the biggest crook. And all my friends did, too. Like, so all my running buddies that we worked at the grocery store together, you know, we all had a crush on her. Yeah, so that, I, I would say Tiffany Thiessen. Love it. All right, my friend, where can, uh, where can uh, people find you on uh, social media? Well, of course, just by my name on Facebook. Um, and then Johnny, my name on Twitter, Johnny, M-I-L-B fan is my Twitter was a handle. Yep. Like, if you want poorly written tweets. Some um, good fun. Some good not, fun. Nothing serious. Now, like I said, Facebook's a little different because actually people that you you live with yeah, and i'm with you there let's stick well, with the twitter yeah tw twitter's more fun tw twitter my wife's gotten into this tiktok mess yeah I'm, i don't know I, I don't think i can do that i can't she tried to show me some of those videos yesterday and uh i said this is mind-numbing nonsense <laughs> yeah like this this is going to deteriorate brain cells after a while she said well you don't have a problem with twitter i said twitter is banter twitter is conversation you know, yeah, I mean, that, you're it, absolutely right. It, I, I just, and I made the mistake of saying something about the Savannah bananas. Oh, they're on TikTok. I said, what? Because I, I was, I had seen they were. Oh, we had the Savannah bananas. They're on everything. Yeah, I, I, you know, they had several features on them last few weeks. I don't own anything Savannah bananas, which is kind of a shock. Neither um, do I. I. I'm trying to work on that. My only college league is of course the otter bots and, uh, and you mentioned the other day the disco turkeys i do have one of those dad hats mm -hmm. that's a great hat i want a spartan burger something yeah yeah i would love a, a spartan burgers i really like that logo i'm sort of un they never did the ambassador thing but i've claimed to be their unofficial yeah that's right i remember that sweet and, um, uh, but I, I don't own any gear. So I'm, I guess I'm not a, a great ambassador. You should definitely uh, also look at the Northwoods league. That's a, that's a good league. There's some uh, good teams. Yeah. yeah I know. I, I just opened up the gates for more. I, I know. And I'm sorry, but I'm telling you, you would enjoy it. My friend. I've, I've looked, it's been a while at, at that league, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know anything making bacon. There's a lot of these popular college teams that I, I don't own any of their, their merchandise. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't. I, I feel less of a human for that. But, uh, <laughs> but hey, that's what makes me Danville's official ambassador. For the there great you go, my friend. Of the great state of Mississippi. <laughs> all all 2.9 million of us love our Danville Lauterbach. <laughs> there you go. Love it. Well, my friend, I want to thank you for, for this. This was a lot of fun. I really appreciate you coming on my podcast. I really enjoyed it. it I've been looking forward to this for days. Like I said, I've been studying the questions, and then you threw some curves at me. I, I, I do what I can. I feel like that was coming, and I really wasn't prepared. Just, you know, um, <laughs> we'll be down to the minors. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my friend. Well, again, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great night. Enjoy you getting too. Pleasure. Bye -bye. That was a fun one. Johnny's a good dude, so make sure you guys are giving him a follow. His Twitter handle is Johnny MILB Fan, okay? Now, before I go, a couple things. One, make sure that you are subscribed to this podcast so that way you guys are always in the know when something is coming up. Make sure you rate it so that way it goes up on the ranking so more people are able to enjoy it. If you're interested in the video version, it is on my YouTube channel. I will put a link so that way you guys are always able to go ahead and take a look at it. All right? And make sure you guys tell one more person. Until then, keep on grinding and please support the minor leagues. This podcast is part of the Curved Brim Media Network. Here are some of the other members of Curved Brim Media. Hi, this is Ed Rivera of the Data Chronicles. Join me as I interview people just like you and players, coaches, GMs on the path that led you to become a fan of the sport. I'm Paul Caputo, and on the Baseball by Design podcast, I talk to minor league baseball teams, designers, and other super interesting people about what these minor league baseball logos mean. And I talk a little bit about ice cream helmets. 
What's up, Bucketheads? I'm Anna DiTomaso, and each week on the Baseball Bucket List podcast, I speak with a different fan about their favorite baseball memories, what the game means to them, and what's left to check off on their baseball bucket list. Hey guys, this is Patrick Larson from the Minor League Baseball Hat History Series, and in every episode, I go through the history of minor league teams through my personal collection of hats. You can find me on Twitter at at PatLarson1. I hope you guys enjoy. This is Patrick. And Corey. Of BaseballMapper.com. And we have made an interactive map to help highlight all baseball teams from the majors down to collegiate summer leagues. We want to bring you closer to baseball. So get on the site and find a team near you today. Learn more about Curve Brim Media at CurveBrimMedia.com.